Okay, so it's been a little while. I apologize for that. Uh, I've just been very busy. Um, but I've got some free time and I'm in the shed. So I'm going to keep building uh, my current build here. So today's video, we're going to install uh, our... Uh, our drive system basically so we're going to mount the motor up there we're going to put our uh, PTO shaft now this mower I'm not going the tradi traditional uh, clutch this one I'm going a centrifugal clutch now this centrifugal clutch I've purchased from mopartsoz.com.au uh, so I've paid this with my own money in fact I've actually never installed one of these and I've never used one of these so a uh, little bit of a learning curve for myself but uh, it seems pretty simple uh, hopefully I'll do this right and uh, follow along so a couple things we need to do first a um, couple things we need to do first one we need to open our motor we need to put some uh, oil in our motor uh, so I purchased a Briggs & Stratton quite like those motors uh, but there's various motors out on the market now various prices so uh, I've gone Briggs & Stratton we'll fill her up with some motor oil and also we need to so we've got a self-aligning bearing so this bearing goes in our PTO housing uh, this is a brand new PTO housing from Mopart's Oz as well so when I purchased the centrifugal clutch it actually comes as a complete kit so that kit will include uh, the clutch the the shaft the uh, PTO housing the bearing uh, spaces rings everything you need uh, it comes in a kit so sometimes it is a cheaper option so that's that's the reason behind me doing this instead of me buying uh, so basically my whole drive system on the original mower uh, was cactus and I need to replace everything so uh, I sort of did the sums and it was actually cheaper for me to buy the complete kit uh, so I've done that and um, I'm a little bit excited to see how it goes so I've seen it I've seen it on Facebook groups, there's quite a few people using them, uh, so hopefully it's worth the money. So it comes with a self-aligning bearing, so this bearing needs greasing, so uh, before we put that up and press it into our PTO bearing housing, we will need to push some grease into that, uh, and then once we've done that, we can basically bolt it all up on the mower, so it it's, seems quite simple, um, hopefully it is, uh, but... First things first, let's get my motor and let's get some motor oil in it. Okay, so here's my motor, uh, Briggs & Stratton as I said. So I purchased this from Small Engine Warehouse. Uh, now, I have purchased this with my own money. I have no affiliation with Small Engine Warehouse. However, I have used the discount code. So I found that discount code on a face group that i'm part of uh so this facebook group here so scott bonner restorations uh if you go onto facebook and join that group uh you will be entitled to a uh, small discount uh on purchasing this motor so glenn russell runs that facebook page um he's worked very hard to secure uh one a cheaper price and also if you purchase a mower a motor with the discount code that he has uh, given everyone they'll also give you a one liter bottle of oil so i'm not going to tell you that discount code you have to go sign up on face or not sign up you have to become a member of scott bonner restoration facebook group and uh you should be able to find that code there so i'd highly recommend it um and i'll also make note that glenn russell's behind that group and he's worked very hard for that code so uh, definitely go and support the guys that support us doing this sort of stuff so here's the motor so we're going to put some oil in there so 600 mil of oil goes into this engine uh, it's it's sort of quite a simple thing basically uh, these are your oil uh, fill and points so basically uh, when you fill it up it's got a little dipstick I actually pay no attention to that dipstick. Uh, it will tell you uh, if your engine oil is low, I guess. Uh, however, what I like to do is fill it up to the bottom of this, uh, just just before it fills out of that, uh, and then that is the correct amount of oil. So basically how the engine is designed 
it is designed so when the engine is sitting flat you can't actually overfill it with oil so uh, anyway quite a simple thing the motor also comes with a exhaust deflector so this exhaust exhaust deflector I use every time I buy one of these mowers so if you don't use it uh, here's your exhaust here if you don't use it what I found is uh, the exhaust just blows straight out into your legs uh, now it's, it's not the it's not the most enjoyable getting blasted by a hot exhaust uh, the entire time you're mowing so I always install that I just uh, put it like so so the exhaust actually gets blasted downwards um, so I'll quickly screw that on now uh, I'll find a funnel and I'll tip uh, some oil in this and then we'll keep moving Okay, so motor oil's in. Um, it is a four stroke SAE oil. Uh, I do have another video uh, where I go into a bit more detail about this sort of stuff. Uh, I'll link that in the corner somewhere. And uh, if you wanna watch that, that'd be great. Uh, we've put our exhaust deflector on. Uh, so now that basically deflects all the exhaust uh, downwards uh, and not into our legs. So that's it. So this motor is now uh, ready to go uh, at this point. I could start this if I uh, if I wanted to but i um, not going to do that we'll uh, We'll start mounting this up on the mower and We'll see how things go. So actually next step. We'll we'll put uh, some grease uh, Grease into our self-aligning bearing uh, and then once we've done that we'll press that into our uh, PTO shaft. So here we go Okay, uh, so self-aligning self bearing, uh, I'm going to grease it, so this is the grease I'm going to be using, uh, it's, I have no affiliation with these guys, it's nothing special, it's just uh, something I purchased from, I think it was Super Cheap Auto, it's just a, uh, so extreme performance grease, uh, it's for multi-purpose, uh, and then all these pictures here, so uh, we've got disc brake bearings, boat, trailers, transport, industrial, motors, motorcycles, chains, uh, farming, marine, full it's basically, it's just a, a multi-purpose grease, There's nothing special about it. Uh, but basically you want something that's going to withstand a, a higher amount of temperature. Um, you've got to remember that this bearing will be spinning around at sort of two or three thousand uh, revolutions. So that's quite quick. So you definitely want to, uh, probably a, a decent quality grease is what I'm trying to get at. So how are we going to do this? Uh, now do... Do as I say, not as I do. Uh, I'd highly recommend you wear gloves doing this. Um, I find it easier not doing gloves. Maybe I shouldn't say that on YouTube, but anyway. Uh, all I do is dip my finger in here and then I just push it, literally just push it into the side of the bearing. Um, and then as you do that, what that does is uh, pushes around all the little actual ball, ball parts of the bearing and uh and that's how that's how it's done so uh i'll do i'll quickly do that and then i'll flip it over and i'll do the other side uh and then we should be right to press that into our bearing holder so Okay, so all the grease is in our bearing now. I've, I've cleaned that up a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but um, if I push that sideways, you can see there's a, a pile of, uh, like a ton of grease in there. Uh, more grease the better. Uh, I mean, obviously you can only put so much before it starts going everywhere. So 
um, but you can't over grease it if that that's what I'm trying to say so now I've done that uh, I'm going to press that into my PTO bearing uh, holder so we'll put that in like so I'm going to do that in my vise so basically I'm just going to put that like so and um, squish it in the vise so that, that should just push that in nicely uh, that will in the in the in the bearing holder there's a little lip so basically you want to push that down all the way to that lip um, and that's it as far as you go so once you've done that uh, you've got a this small bit of rubber now this bit of rubber will actually sit at the back like so and it should it's it should it should sit flush uh, with the PTO so if it doesn't sit, sit flush it means that your bearings not pressed in far enough uh, and you'll have to keep pressing it so I'll quickly do that okay so I've pressed the bearing in now um, if you get your uh, rubber sleeve that goes on the back of this bearing pop it in like so you should find that that rubber sleeve uh, if you just run your finger up it should be sitting flat with the back of the uh, bearing housing so you'll know that it's all, all the way in uh, alternatively you can look on the other side and if you look on an angle actually you can see the uh, outer race of the bearing and you can actually see that it's touching all the way inside to the lip uh, that it's meant to be touching so that's excellent the rubber sleeve there is, is more or less just to hold the uh, grease in there uh, it's not a packer or a space or anything like that uh, it's just so you don't have grease going sort of everywhere uh, and then that's it so now we've done that uh, we're almost done really to be honest um, it's just a matter of bolting our engine up on the mower uh, and then basically pushing everything through as it goes so um, I'm actually going to I'm not sure if this is a good idea or not but I'm actually going to mount this uh, so our centrifugal clutch onto my motor first uh, I might just loosely do it there I won't do any grub screws or anything up uh, and then once I've done that I'll sort of I'll put on don't forget your um, rubber grommet so rubber grommet needs to go on our shaft like like so, up the end here, uh, and then our PTO bearing housing will slip on the end here. Hopefully I can get that on quite easily. Uh, once we've done that, then we need to put our woodruff keys in. Uh, once our woodruff keys in, we can put our gear on the other side and then put the uh, nut on there. And that should hold everything onto the motor. Uh, and then if this is still loose on the motor shaft I should be able to position the motor where it lines up with the bolts uh, and once we've done that then I can tighten up the grub screws that are on the centrifugal clutch so sort of all needs to happen at the same time hopefully hopefully I did a good job of explaining that but it's sort of I'm sort of winging it because I've never sort of done it before but uh, watch along hopefully if I'll, I'll stop if I've got any notes that I sort of want to say but uh, hopefully it all goes together quite quite easily so. oh one thing I didn't mention was our engine keyway so an engine key uh, make sure that goes in uh, if you don't put that in then put your clutch on there you'll find that your clutch just slips all over the place extremely bad for the engine shaft uh, and your well your mower just it just won't work uh, properly more or less you basically render your whole drive chain uh, useless mostly because your engine shaft will be useless um, it just puts it all out of like square and then your engine keyway is all damaged and it, like, you'd, you'd almost be up for a brand new motor so uh, engine key must go in I just put that to the front side I sit it in maybe a mil uh, it doesn't like it doesn't need to sit flush with the end of the uh, the engine shaft uh, as long as it just goes into our uh, keyway that's cut in our clutch so if you had a normal clutch it's exactly the same thing there'll be a keyway in the clutch cone uh, and then that or in the clutch sorry clutch half not clutch cone uh, and that'll slip on so So 
I am going to smear a small amount of uh, grease on here. That's just to assist when sliding this on so it slides on smoothly. Um, so the red stuff you see is just a bit of grease. It's the same grease that I put in the bearing. So. Alright, so I've already found an issue, so because I've never done this, it sort of makes sense now that I'm putting it together. Uh, you'll see that there's two grub screws on the um, centrifugal clutch. Now, they, one of those grub, grub screws need to screws, it needs to screw down onto the top of the uh, engine keyway so that doesn't uh, loosen or move. So, if you put your keyway, if you put your key too far to the end of the shaft, uh, you'll find that that grub screw will miss the key, um, the, uh, the key completely. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to push that key further back to the uh, motor uh, and then that should line up with the uh, grub screw. So that's what I'm doing now. Okay, so you can see you can see that the clutch is uh, sliding freely on the shaft there. That's how I'm going to leave that. Uh, basically because I don't know where to position this on the shaft to line up with the uh, engine bolts on the mower. So I'm just going to loosely leave that there for now uh, and we'll work that out once, once it's up on the mower. Uh, I've already done this, but at this point you need to put your seal on your PTO shaft uh, if you don't, you won't be able to get it on there afterwards. So slip that up. It just it just sits there. It doesn't it doesn't press into the bearing housing or anything like that. It just sits there and then sits sits hard up against the uh, bearing housing once you uh, mount that up there. So next step is PTO bearing housing. Uh, one thing to note with that is there's an oiling hole at the top. Uh, so that hole needs to be at the top. You can actually put it the other way. Um, that's not the correct way because if you do that uh, you, you can't oil the bearing so make sure that holes at the top while you're doing this slips on like so uh, our woodruff key I'm gonna push that in now um, yeah I'm gonna push that in now so I'm just gonna put a, more, uh, a little bit more grease on here it just makes it a lot easier when putting it all together Okay, so I think I'll wait for the woodruff key. Um, what I might do is put this up on the mower and then bolt this on, uh, and then that'll uh, provide support to the PTO shaft. Uh, so when I push the woodruff key down, there's, there's no chance of bending this PTO shaft. Uh, if that bends, uh, you'll have a whole crazy wobble going on, and um, that's not a good thing for a cylinder mower. So we'll mount that up on the mower now. We'll bolt the PTO bearing housing in, uh, we can bolt the engine down and then we can also tighten up the grub screws on here uh, and then we'll do the rest afterwards. Okay, so we've got the motor up on the mower. I've just bolted it down. Our clutch is still loose on the shaft of the motor. Uh, so that allows me to move it up and down. So basically, I'm just gonna slide this across until our PTO bearing housing hits the wall of the mower here. Uh, and then we'll bolt that in. And then once we've got that position, then we know where this needs to be uh, grub screwed down onto the uh, motor shaft so that's what I'm doing remember that our oiling hole is pointing up
Okay, so now I've got the PGO bearing housing um, bolted in. Uh, the clutch can no longer sl slip in and out. Uh, so basically that's given us our uh, destination on the, on the output shaft of the motor. So I'm gonna do up those grub screws. Um, once those grub screws are done up, uh, it's just a matter of putting the woodruff key in and our uh, PTO sprocket. So almost done. Okay, grab screws are done. Okay, so this is not going to slip on uh, and the reason behind that is because I've got paint in, on the inside of the uh, sprocket. So I'm going to grab uh, a very light bit of sandpaper, give that a quick little sand. Uh, now you only just want to take the paint off, you don't want to take any of the metal off if you're going to do that. So I'll quickly do that off camera. Uh, okay, so I've got the PTO sprocket on. Uh, I forgot to push play on the uh, on the camera there. <laughs> so basically, I removed the paint from the inside of the uh, sprocket, uh, and I've lined that up, and I've basically just pushed that on. So I did need to tap that uh, with a socket. So I just got a socket, um, something big enough to give you clearance with the um, with the PTO shaft. So I've tapped that on. Uh, now, when you do the when you do the nut, up, it will actually when you tighten the nut, it will actually um, push the sprocket all the way in uh, anyway. Uh, but you want to get that on basically as far as that sprocket will go, um, and then do your do your washer and your nut, and that should be it. So. Okay, so that's it. So, finished product. We've got our motor installed. We've got our uh, centrifugal clutch installed. Shafts running around to our sprocket. Now we've got our sprocket in there. We can continue on. Uh, we can mount all our chains and we can start putting our intermediate clutch uh, pins in. So. That will be the next video because I actually think that this video is going to be extremely long uh, by the time I edit it. So uh, thanks for watching guys. Uh, your support, um, it, it means the world. So uh, thanks for watching. If you do like this video, please give us a thumbs up, give us a like, a comment uh, and subscribe. Thanks.